Good morning, Mackenzie Johnston with Tri-State Livestock News, bringing you your Tuesday morning headlines concerning fair cattle markets. Sponsored by Sandhills Beef Company of Mullen, Nebraska. Eat like a rancher. America first means buying directly from the producer. Be the change. To learn about everything Sandhills Beef Company has to offer, be sure to head on over to their website, sandhillsbeefco.com. According to Reuters, on Saturday, Spain's Agriculture Ministry reported that more than 850 head of cattle that have spent months on a ship in the Mediterranean are no longer fit for transport and need to be killed. According to an animal rights activist, the cattle, have, uh, the cattle were kept in hellish conditions for the past two months while the ship struggled to find a buyer. Numerous countries rejected the animals over fears that they may have bovine blue tongue virus. Blue tongue uh, in cattle causes lameness and hemorrhaging, however, it does not affect humans. And this is the same group of cattle that I reported on last week, and they have been on this ship uh, out in the Mediterranean Sea since before Christmas. A confidential veterinarian's report determined that the cattle were worn down because of their lengthy journey and euthanasia was, uh, was the best option for their health and welfare. The report did not list if the cattle actually had blue tongue or not. Spain's Agriculture Ministry released a statement on Saturday urging the ship's owners to kill the cattle. If the ship's owners chose not to slaughter the cattle, the Ministry of Ag said that they would do it in a subsidiary way. Maquel Masramon, a lawyer representing the ship owner, Talia Shipping Line, asked for samples from the cattle so that they could be tested for blue tongue. Masramon saw, that, uh, saw no reason for the cattle to be destroyed since the report did not mention the cattle having any serious disease. Reuters also has reported that on Monday, South Africa's government unveiled plans for a special court to expedite the return of land taken from black, uh, from black people under apartheid, a system of legislation that upheld segregationist policies against non-white citizens of South Africa. It has been two decades since the end of white minority rule in South Africa, but there are still large areas of private land under white ownership. Redistribution of this land has often, uh, has often been held up in court, which has resulted in thousands of land claims remaining unresolved. The proposed land court is part of South Africa's government efforts to redistribu redistribute millions of acres of land to compensate for the injustices that black people dealt with when their land was dispossessed. Critics of this proposal say the African National Congress has been too timid redistributing land, but those on the right warn that redistribution may scare off investors, referring to the mass land confiscations that wrecked the economy in Zimbabwe. A few weeks ago, I reported on legislation proposed by Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. His legislation would, um, would have our United States government purchasing land from willing sellers here in the United States to, uh, to put together land, grade, land grants of 160 acres to give to black people at no cost. Granted, our government is not just confiscating land here in America. However, I do believe so there are some parallels to uh, Senator Cory Booker's legislation and what is going on in South Africa. And I think it is pertinent for us to pay attention to what goes on with Booker's legislation going forward. Yesterday, I reported that Beyond Meat announced their partnerships with McDonald's, KFC, and Pizza Hut to be a preferred supplier of their plant-based meat products. Ag Center has reported that despite this positive news, the company reported a $25 million loss for the fourth quarter of 2020. Beyond Meat's U.S. food service sales dropped 43% from the same period last year. Additionally, investors were discouraged with a recent poll of consumers who would happily pay an extra $2 for a real burger. Brownfield Ag News has reported that according to Dr. Uh, Dr. Art Douglas, Professor Emeritus of Atmospheric Science at Creighton University, opportunities for moisture this spring will be few and far between. If moisture doesn't show up in the spring, the western U.S. will become noticeably dry in April and May. After that, the dryness will start to creep into the western portion of the Corn Belt. The majority of the U.S. will be in a very hot and dry pattern this summer, said Dr. Douglas. Cooler temperatures will finally arrive in the western Corn Belt by fall, but the issue is lack of precipitation. 
Douglas believes there may be some problems with the crop in terms of, in terms of filling corn and beans. He also warned against the possible inadequate grazing conditions with the lack of moisture. Finally, National Beef Wire reported yesterday that Choice Box Beef ended the day at 239.03, that was down a buck 50, and Select Box Beef ended the day at 227.64, and that was down $2.09. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope everyone's week is off to a great start. I hope you are all enjoying this beautiful weather we're having. Um, it's supposed to be in between 50 to 60 degrees here all week. Absolutely gorgeous. Have yourself a terrific Tuesday, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning.